Hey friends, I'm back. Second video of the day. After talking to you all in the comment section and on Instagram and getting this conversation going about these three new photos that were finally released from the Scream 5 set, I've realized there's a few little details that I didn't even notice and I completely looked over that obviously I need to comment on. If you haven't seen my first video in regards to these three new photos, go check it out on my channel. You can watch this first and then go back and see these new details for yourself. First, Stu Mocker's house. As I said in my original video, this looks like Stu Mocker's house. It's gotta be Stu Mocker's house. But the more I look at it and then compare it to the house in the original Scream, to the photos of the original Scream, it's kind of, there's, there's not even an argument about it. There's no discussing it. It just is Stu Mocker's house. The color of the house, the paneling on the house, the color on the windowsills, that like red color, um, even the posts in the background, the little patio, it's, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that this is Stu Mocker's house. So like compare those photos for yourself and you will feel the same way. And this gets me super excited. Next, Sydney's jacket. Also previously mentioned this in the first video, but the more I look at the jacket and compare it to the jacket that she was wearing, I think it was in Scream 3, the leather version. She had like the brown suede version in the second Scream. Scream 3, it was a leather version. This one is so similar. And this also gets me excited. This is Sydney hanging up that purple dress that she was wearing in Scream 4 for all of her book promotion in Woodsboro. She's hanging that up, putting back on her fighting jacket, that brown leather jacket that she's just about to kick some ass in. It just makes me believe that she's an evolved version of Sydney, but bringing Sydney back to where we liked her all. Like I didn't dislike her in Scream 4, but Scream 1, 2, and 3, she was that feisty kind of like fed up with everyone's BS kind of Sydney. And I think they're gonna bring that back. Next, obviously I knew Ghostface was in this movie. Obviously I knew Ghostface was in these photos, but I didn't really like piece it together that this was our first time seeing Ghostface. The first time we're looking at what could be the new mask. I don't know a heck of a lot about these masks. I'm sure that you guys will let me know because there's a lot of you that are like super obsessed with the mask variations, which is great, but I just don't know a lot about it. But this is our first time seeing this ghost face mask that's going to be used in Scream 5. So this is a pretty iconic moment that we've all been waiting for. In addition to the mask, we have the knife. The knife looks a lot more similar to the knife that was used in the first Scream. Um, in Scream 4, the knife was like kind of huge. It was way too big. And that's because it was all CGI. The knife was put in in post, in editing. There was never actually a knife in Ghostface hands because Wes Craven just didn't want to use the collapsible knives when filming Scream 4. So he had it all done um, CGI. So just fake knives everywhere in Scream 4, uh, which I'm excited because to me, the knife is just as iconic as the mask. Like you look at the mask, it's Ghostface. You look at the knife, it's Ghostface's weapon. They tie together and I'm glad to see they're bringing it back again to the original. Lastly, we've got these necklaces. Sydney and Gail are wearing necklaces that look very, very, very similar. I mean, they're pretty much the same. And um, I was talking to a group on Instagram and they said maybe they're best friend necklaces. I mean, that's a valid perspective. They've been through so much together, but I simply do not see them connecting on that level. I mean, even if they are great friends, I do not see Gail or Sydney ever putting on like BFF necklaces. So my first thought was that these are Dewey's ashes. The only reason I can think of that Gail or Sydney would come back to Woodsboro is if Dewey died. I mean, Gail would come back if there was a story to report. I just don't think Sydney would come back. So I'm speculating that Dewey dies at some point, like I did in my previous video. And um, that's why Gail and Sydney come back to town and his ashes are put in those necklaces and given to the people that are most important to him, which is going to be sad for us all, but someone's got to go. Okay, someone's got to go. Also, if you haven't checked out the interview on bloodydisgusting.com with the directors and the writers of Scream 5, you need to go do that. That was also released today. It kind of seems like now that they're done filming, they're going to maybe open those floodgates and give us little pieces of information um, over the next coming weeks. I really hope we get something in December for the anniversary or even in January for the one year leading up to the release of Scream 5. But this interview with them reveals a lot of information. It calms any worries and concerns that I had. You know, I don't want another Scream 4 repeat no matter how much I like that movie. I want to bring this back down to reality and bring it all the way full circle to the OG Scream 
one. Go check out that interview, bloody disgusting. Also, all of the cast have been posting on their Instagram today about how it's finished filming, how much they love the script, how much how we're gonna love it, how great the film is. So I suggest just, you know, go stalking them too because that's all I've been doing all day. <laughs> if there's anything more that I missed in these photos, please let me know. I would love to discuss it some more. Let me know your comments, your theories below. Subscribe, like, comment, share, all that fun stuff. And until next time, maybe even later today, I'll be back.